Hi hey guys, um, so in this video I'm going to be covering the things for your Milestone 3. So, um, one of the things that I told you guys you'd be doing is actually creating um, different families. You'll be doing some modeling and you'll bring in outside assets. Um, a lot of you guys have already imported furniture, that's fine. Um, we'll continue to go from there. So what I wanted to show you guys first though, um, I'm going to go over just some information about families here. So um, I'm going to hop into my level 1 right here. Um, and if you uh, had a good eye, um, you may have noticed that um, in my uh, in the demo house that I let you guys work on, I have white molding on the outside and wood on the inside. Um, that was a custom or a small customization I made to some of the existing assets in here. So let me get down a small exterior wall um, just right here. And then we're going to throw a window in here. Um, and so right here, you can see that I've made, I've already made the changes here, but we're going to go through them again. So um, I'm going to place this window right here. And then let's uh, close this, close this. Uh, we will view, tile or view so that we can see, oops, not that one. I did want this one. Okay. All right. So let's tile again. All right. So there's that window right there. You can see this is how it came in, and then this is the window here that I placed. So um, kind of like with a lot of other things in Revit, what I'm going to have you do is click on it, and then um, we're going to go to the Edit Type option right here, and just like in the previous process, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to... Um, so I'm going to add a dash... Um, white here again just kind of repeating the same process that I went through and then um, right here you see that there's different kind of options that we have as far as the height and everything um, in this case we're just going to leave those as they are right now um, and then in this particular case this just has the uh, glass pane and the sash right here so I'm going to change this from sash um, to does I not have that white that I used uh, yeah, clad white. Okay. Actually, no, it's clad. Uh, let's make this bigger. I don't think that's clad, but it's white. Um, so we're going to use this. I'll hit apply and OK. And then once we deselect it, you can see that this whole window in this case has turned entirely white. Um, if I undo that, oh, I hope I didn't destroy it. Yeah, okay. Um, then we can go through here and change a couple different things. Um, so let's see. Um, why don't we take this window and we'll make this actually a really, let's do a weird size. So um, let's say I'm just happy with this overall window, um, but I want something that's three feet wide and a foot tall. So, oops. I'm going to grab the window again, so I'll go to edit here. <clears throat> I'm assuming they don't have a 36 by 12, which they don't. So I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to call this 36 by 12. Um, and again, I'll keep that reference to the white there. Sash material. Um, let's find that white again. Okay. Um, so the other thing I'm going to go in here and change is the height and the dimensions. So the height. Um, because this window is set up in the way it is, I can change the height to one foot here, and I can uh, leave that width at three foot. Um, so I'm going to hit apply, OK, and now we have that window coming in at that particular size. Um, this is kind of an easy process, and this is an easy window to work with. Um, there are some more complicated windows in here, um, like if we put in one of these other ones I have loaded. Um, this casement one might get a little bit weird if you try and, oh no, not that one. Where is it? Yeah, so this one would probably get a little bit weird if I went in here and tried to change it. Um, this one's a little bit more complex too, so um, this is one of those ones where um, you actually have multiple trim sections right here. Um, so when I with some of the other windows that I had in here, you can see that if I go into the edit type, 
um, I have right here materials and finishes in this row um, and I change the exterior frame and exterior trim to white left the interior um, as the stained wood so there are different things you can do with these families in Revit just by going into the edit menu um, and some may or may not give you options um, in this section right here all right um, other ones all oh, right I was going to change the dimensions of this so we'll call this one uh, what do we not have let's do 48 by 48 so 48 inch by 48 inch okay so if I go in here and change this I don't know what's gonna happen with this one this one is kind of a wild card so four foot height four foot um, <clears throat> apply and okay and so that one played nice too it even actually updated here in the model um, so you can't always trust that when you're doing work on this um, but just keep that in mind that you can create different size windows specific to your project um, just by editing those options okay the I'm gonna delete this now and we'll go on to the next thing which is modeling so um, the other thing that I built here was do, do, do. That's fixed. Okay. Um, so the other thing I built was this fireplace right here. And um, sometimes there's things that you need to model in Revit that you don't really have any reference for or anything. Um, and you just kind of need to put something together. So um, if I wanted to, well, I'll walk you guys through the process of building this fireplace because there are a couple elements of that that um, were fairly important. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to your architecture tab right here, just as the default. There's a component button here. I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to do model in place. And that's going to pop up with this menu right here. Um, so you can go through here and try and find the correct sort of category <clears throat> um, for a lot of the stuff that I have you guys model, I think just generic models is fine. Um, I want you guys to understand how to build these, not necessarily that you should expect to build a bunch, um, because it's probably the exception rather than the rule. So um, I'm going to call this chimney two, because it's my second chimney. Okay, so the way Revit works when you're actually modeling things is that it uses a lot of work planes, and we're going to get into work planes a bit more later in the semester. Um, but right now, if I click on show, let me see, you can see right here, there's this big flat area right here. If I rotate around it, it's flat right there. Um, and that's the work plane that I'm working on, all right? So when I start modeling in Revit, it's going to use the work plane that I'm referencing. If I want, I can go here and I can choose set my work plane. And I can do pick a plane, and I can choose this face right here. And you can see that now when it shows the work plane, it's showing this like little area right here, all right? So you can change your work plane, and you're going to want to change your work plane um, if you're modeling anything reasonably complex. Um, but for now, I'm just going to set it back to level one. Um, and so you do have the option, again, you uh, within this menu, um, you can choose show the work plane, you can pick a plane, um, and I can actually change it to a different face in here somewhere, uh, like that. Uh, what did it do? Cancel. Set pick a plane so if we change it to this face now it's changed to that face on the side of the chimney there so you can jump around and change which face that you're using for it for now um, I'm just gonna go with the level one because um, we're just gonna build this straight up so this chimney isn't super complex um, what I used was a series of extrusions and the extrusions um, are going to reference the work plane which is why I think it's important you know what I'm talking about when I say that so if I click on extrusion, um, it's going to let me draw a profile, just like a lot of other things do. Um, if I draw this profile, it's going to be on that extrusion, kind of like how um, if you edit a wall, you see that the profile for that wall is kind of in one place and you can only edit in two dimensions. Same thing with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave these settings here. It looks like it's uh, still set from this last upper segment of the chimney I drew. And I'm going to hit check mark and you see that it drew that wedge. Um, and it drew it in a very specific location. It drew it from the extrusion start uh, to the extrusion end. So it's going to take that work plane that I did, and it's going to do this extrusion starting at 13 feet above or from 
the uh, work plane that I set, and it's going to end at 24 feet from the work plane that I set. So if I was to change some of these values, if I change this to uh, 15 foot, oops, and then move out, you can see that it got shorter. So these control sort of the distance that this extrusion is based on from that work plane. Um, so to actually build this chimney, um, let's go in here, we'll create an extrusion, and then just from here in the top down view, um, I can draw a rectangle, and it doesn't matter if it's the same size or shape or whatever. Um, and so then I need to set or change the settings here. So my extrusion start is going to be at zero foot because I want to do the bottom up. Um, and then we'll call this top part eight foot, I guess. I don't know what I did with the original one. So now I have zero foot and eight foot. So it's going to, again, start on the work plane on the ground. It's going to take this profile and at zero foot, zero inches, it's going to draw up until it gets to eight foot and stop drawing it. So what you end up with is this rectangle right here, right? Um, once I have this rectangle, I can now do this next section, and that next section uses a slightly different tool. Um, so again, I'll go back to create, and then what I'm going to create this time is a blend. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to have two surfaces, so I'm going to start with this bottom rectangle and then this top rectangle. So by default, it's going to start on the bottom. Um, let's set the first end to 8 foot. And then we'll set the second end up here to 14 foot. Again, doesn't matter uh, for this. All right, so right now I'm editing the bottom and I can click this to switch to the top. So stay where I am right now. I'm gonna draw this. Boom, there it is, okay. Then I'm gonna click edit top and I'm gonna draw, um, let's see, it's offset four inches. Um, and spacebar it so it goes inside um, and then just for decorative reasons we'll pull that part in a little bit so we have that again we have this base that's here this outer rectangle that's matching up with that and then we have this other one which is this inner rectangle and then again it's going to extrude from that first one but it's going to reshape itself down to the second one all right so when I hit check mark, you can see that it comes in and this should be kind of tilted slightly inwards. Um, and then why did we change material? Um, let's go. Let's go back here and just change this material. Uh, very common. Okay. All right. So there we are, we're back to the material. Um, if I don't like this, again, it's just kind of like everything else in Reddit. I could just double click on it, edit the top. Let's say I wanted this to come in uh, right there and right there. So I can do whatever I want and it will just kind of adjust that and redraw it, all right? Um, so let's see, let's do the final top section. Um, I'll actually have to go up to level two because of how high that went. So let's move level two over. Come on. You can go right there. Okay. So then again, same idea from level two. I'll just continue this extrusion. Um, I believe we we're at 14 foot. So I'll change my for start from 14 foot and my end to 24 foot, which I think is what the other one was using um, for its final section. We'll do a rectangle and I'm just going to again trace this top section right here. And then I'll hit the green check mark and it's gone. Oh, no. Okay. What did I do here? 8 foot, 14 foot, 14 foot. Oh, uh, because it's from level 2. Um, let me edit this extrusion and I'll have to redraw that. Um, from level two. So we'll just delete that real quick. Um, I probably just didn't think about that, just did it. So let's go from level one now because that's where my extrusion was. Um, we'll keep the same settings. And then I should be able to come to my level two and trace it from here. No, that was just my mouse being silly. Don't worry about that. Uh, no. that one check mark okay 
So that's, again, that's based all on the same level. Just the issue was when I went to level two to start drawing it, it changed my work plane, which is why work plane is important, okay? So that's a super janky little um, little chimney we put together there. Um, you can do a couple other things that are really fun with this. So if I was to go to create here, create an extrusion, um, let's, again, we'll set it back down to zero, and uh, let's do 10 foot for this. And then if I wanted to draw, let's see here. Um, yeah. So we'll do 5.5 inches. Oh, nope, that was not inches. Okay. 5.5 inches. I'll try and get sneaky and just do that. Okay. Just zoom in sometimes and it'll give you the inch scale. Okay. So we'll do this right here where we have an extrusion start at 0 and 10. And then um, when we draw that, we get this pole. And then if I go in here and create another extrusion, um, let's do... Uh, let's see if I can... Oh, it's probably not going to let me find the exact center right there except for that. Um, we'll just draw some extra lines. So we'll do half inch, little line sections like that. Um, what was the distance here? So half inch, okay. So this needs to go six inches over and there. Yes, I know we have extra lines. Uh, okay, so we'll just clean that up a little bit. All right, and then, oh. Okay, so um, we've got this. Let's set this to go from um, two feet to nine feet. So if we do this, we end up with kind of like a little, uh, let's actually change this back to uh, wood as well. This wasn't supposed to be brick. Hey, we'll do a nice light wood so we can actually see what's going on too. Um, okay, so there's that section. Now, if you copy and paste it, usually it's pretty nice and it'll just kind of let you do stuff. Um, Alright, so actually let's leave that alone because I'm actually going to have to copy it again later anyway. So we'll leave this section right here, I'll do a create, we'll do another blend, um, we'll create the bottom as that, we'll create the top um, is that outer one, and then when we said we went two foot, so let's make this one foot, s no, uh, let's do one foot ten, so this will just be a small detail. Um, I'm sorry, what? Two foot, one foot, ten inch. Okay, so when I complete this, now we have this kind of little wedge thing that's right here. Just a nice little detail. Um, again, again, we'll change the material to cherry. And then um, once I'm happy with that part, I can actually go through here, select it, um, that should have grabbed bottom section two. So we'll control C, control V, so copy paste, paste that there, and then we'll just try and select one of each. Come on. I think I've got them. Uh, Let's try to rotate then. So we'll rotate, and let's see if we get lucky. Yep. Okay. So we've got our little detail right there in the wood. Um, so then with this, I can take this and um, copy and paste it again. Um, if we give it kind of a long distance like that. Um, and then same thing, copy it this way. And then... Um, 
So then let's change the work plane to actually show you guys what that's like. So if I was to come in here and um, let's see, create, we'll do another extrusion. And I'm going to actually change the work plane. So pick plane. I'm going to choose this face of this wood. Don't worry that it's like not wide enough, really. Um, it's fine. Um, and we can just kind of work outside of that area. Though who knows, maybe this is the year they changed that on me. Okay. So um, we'll create an extrusion. Um, we're going to make this a... Um, again, we'll go, let's see. Go three quarters out. We'll make this a two by six. Uh, so we'll take this. So now I have this profile drawn um, sort of perpendicular to the camera, right? Like it's right there, but it's going to come across. So when you're drawing these, you don't necessarily just have to go um, from zero and on. Um, I can set this to be um, negative two feet, and then I have no idea what that gap is. So we'll just see what happens, what this looks like, and if necessary, we can adjust it. So there's a crossbar right there. Boy, these need to stop coming in. Is that other material? Okay. And then let's see. Can we see that on level two? I want to figure. OCD won't let me like walk away from this one. Um, just get a measurement here. Oh my god, stop that. About one foot six and a half. We'll get this one measured right just because it is kind of semi important. One foot six, okay, well. Here you go, OCD. Okay, 0.5, there we go. All right, so then we'll take this and I'm actually gonna um, go back into the profile now that I'm happy with that position. Um, so I'll edit the extrusion. Um, let's go back over to here, front. And we'll move this down, no. Oh, is this going to be one of the tricky ones that doesn't let us move it? Okay. Yes, it is. All right. So that's easy enough to deal with. There we go. Okay. Um, that's how we'll move that one down. So, okay. We've got that. Um, so that's now going across this bar. And then same idea as the last one. We'll copy and paste it. This one might be a bit trickier to place because we're not going to have the other things. Um, why won't you let me select? Okay, so we'll just bump this, and then when it's pretty close there, we'll just uh, edit the plane on this one as well. So edit the extrusion, and I'm just trying to get this to snap to the center. No guarantees um, that that's going to work, though. Oh yeah, now it's going to be OCD time. Um, that's that one. I oh, got what's that length? Two inches. Yeah. Okay. inches oh, I'm so close what is that that's silly okay you know what that is close enough it's like a fraction of a fraction of an inch okay I'm not even gonna bother about it all right so we'll place that and then so we've got those two crossbars going across and then we can again rotate our view over here um, we can pick a new Click away from that, create, set work plane. Um, 
Now this is something where I could just choose to pick a plane and I could come over here and I could choose that as my work plane. Um, so that I could come in here on the right side and we could create an extrusion. Um, let's start here. And um, again, five foot five. Nope, that's feet every time. All right. Five and five inches. One point five. Did I do two and a half inches earlier? Oh man, y'all gonna kill me, huh? Um. All right. So then we'll set that. Uh, this was wider, so I'm actually gonna do because the extrusion is going the, to the right in this view. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that negative two feet, and I'm going to extend this to uh, 13 foot, and that's just a complete and total guess. We'll see how that turns out. Um, yeah, that's a bit too far. Um, and again, you can just grab the extrusion and drag the handles in like that. Um, I'm not going for perfect, though. This is just a demo. Uh, but I'm going to change this to cherry. Okay. So once I've done that, I can copy and paste this one in this view. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that first. And then what Revit's going to do is it's going to create an array here. And we've kind of... Oh, I deselected it too soon. Okay. So um, we're going to create an array right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it this array is going to be... Uh, let's do... Let's do six inches apart. So right there, it's just through this second little object, right? But what I have here, and you can see it if, uh, I don't think it shows it here. Yeah, it's not going to show it there. Um, so it gives me the, oh, there it is right there. Okay. So I've got this object right here. I can actually select that number, and I can tell it how many different times I want this to duplicate. So let's, uh, again, guessing, see what 15 does. Um, yeah, we're not going to worry about that. I'm not trying to get that crazy deep into modeling for this. So let's do 21. Um, it looks like two more, so we'll change this to 23. Um, okay, so then once you've done that, um, I'm going to call this a pergola, and I'm going to walk away from it. And so I'll hit Finish Model. And now this is one giant object here in Revit, right? So I can take this and its little fanciness and uh, from level one actually let's just use the move button that's a little bit safer with this um, and then we can move it out to the patio out here so that now i've got a nice little pergola in the backyard um, so that's kind of modeling it's a little bit complex at first but it makes sense if you just think about it as you're doing um extrusion or a push pull tool and sketch up right that's the way that my brain wraps around that um so just wanted to show you guys kind of how modeling works. It gets a bit deeper, um, but generally you guys aren't going to be doing too much of it because of the next topic. Um, so the next topic that we're going to cover is going to be actually bringing in outside assets. Um, again, you've already kind of done this. Um, if you click on component, um, don't, don't save for now. Um, so you've already gone through, some of you have already gone through here and you've pulled stuff in, right? Um, so right now, if I go to load family, actually, let me close, uh, let me merge my views real quick. Um, tab views. Okay. So, um, architecture component, load family. And so then in this case, a bunch of you, like I said, have already gone in here. You found the furniture, you found some of these options, right? So if I want to put a piano in my backyard, um, boom, there's a piano under the pergola. Oh, man, I need to stay away from alliteration tonight. Okay. Um, same idea. I can go to component, load in a family. Um, let's see. Let's get a nice little TV flat screen out here. Um, and so you can just go through and start bringing stuff in, right? Um, the default things in Revit are not great. Um, I mean, they're, they're fine for just sort of stock assets that you could throw in a model. Um, they'll fill in a space, but often you'll kind of need to go in and just kind of uh, load stuff from somewhere else. So, 
Oh, these are fancier than I remember. Um, hey, you can go throw a drafting table in. That's relevant. Okay. Except when it looks like that. Um, okay. So um, there are different things that you guys can import through this process. Um, um, some of them are going, in this case right now, um, all I've shown you guys is going to be actually loading um, sort of the stock assets that come with Revit. So um, if we want to get a chair in here, um, we can do that. Um, and you just place them just like you do Windows. So it's the same process because they are literally the same idea as Windows. Um, Windows, again, they use the, the window family, right? These use this uh, furniture family that's specific to that. So they have unique properties. One of the other things I would want to point out too is if you guys are doing, um, and lights is where you're going to run into this most often, um, is if you're trying to put lights in. Let me see if I can find a light in here. Let's see, are they internal? Okay, so um, I can't think of one that's going to, okay. Let's do, okay, no, well, let's try one of these. So, all right, we'll pull in this lamp, go to place it, and um, if I'm on level one and I'm moving around, you can see that it's kind of doing its own thing. Um, let's tile views again. So, uh, let's go to level two, okay. So if I'm trying to place this lamp, and I try to place it on that table right there, see how it came in on the ground? So um, different things are going to have different assignment points. If I want this lamp to actually be on top of this table, assuming the table didn't have that tilt on it, I would have to get the height of that table, and then I would have to adjust the level here. So if I set this to three feet, then it's going to be on the surface of that desk, but not necessarily like on that slope. Um, let me see if I can get a different light where we run into issues. Here we go. Let's try one of these sconces. So you've got a wall sconce here, uh, or typically it would go on the wall. This one looks like it's going to play nice, and actually let me kind of put it wherever. Um, Yeah, so this one's just going to go kind of wherever it wants to go to. Um, let me find a good one for you guys. I'll pause and come back. Oh, you know what I missed? Okay, so I didn't see that this had been checked on face on work plane, so that makes it slightly differently. Um, but some of these can actually place on a work plane versus a face. Um, I was thinking that the wall sconce would do this, where if I place it on the wall, it would do that. Um, so you can place lights into walls. Um, more accurately, typically what you're going to want to do is come to your ceiling plan and then start placing in these lights. So if I wanted to have a ceiling plan with a series of lights like this, then I could really just kind of quickly come in here, draw a bunch of lights, and I now have, uh, oh, I still have that view in here, right? Yeah. So now I have these ceiling lights in this area right here, all right? Um, another alternative um, is going to be downloading models from third parties. So Revit only has so many things that are built in, right? It doesn't have a um, 3D warehouse like SketchUp does. Um, so instead you have to go to third parties and download materials. Um, a lot of larger manufacturers, um, I'm thinking like Kohler for example, um, systems furniture manufacturers, um, a lot of um, a lot of lighting companies are going to have their uh, actual lights modeled just because they're super simple. Um, so if you are thinking about using a product that is a manufactured product from an existing sort of um, a large brand, um, they might already have a place where you can download their Revit models. Um, because they're trying to get you to use their models in your Revit model so that their product gets used in the production or the actual produced uh, building that you're using, right? Um, oh, GE was one of the ones I was thinking of. I think they have a, I'm pretty sure they have a lot of Revit models. 
Okay, I take that back. GE is the one that specifically doesn't have their products on Revit. Uh, let me resize this for you guys, though. So, um, Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Cove, they actually have a specific page um, under Trade Resources. They have an option to download CAD libraries, and Revit files are an option to download here. Um, I'm not going to do that at, at this time, but again, um, certain manufacturers have gone through the lengthy process of modeling their own things in Revit. Um, the other option that I would throw to you guys is going to be BIM object. Um, and again, let me resize this. Um, highly recommend you guys uh, use this as a resource. Um, again, these this is kind of the equivalent of um, the 3D warehouse in SketchUp, where a lot of what's here is going to be things that kind of just enthusiasts have made. Um, but you might see random companies like, I think this might be an architect or let's see, high quality wooden furniture. So this company is going to have their models here, uh, potentially for download. Um, I don't have an account active on this right now. Um, so you do have options as far as different catalogs that you can, or different brands that you can download from their catalog here. Um, let's see if there's anyone we recognize. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of different brands in here. Um, was that a solar company? Shoot. Yeah, I guess they have their solar panels and stuff on there. Um, so there are different um, companies that just post their, their actual models up here um, in order for you to be able to use in your Revit file. Um, one of the things that we kind of haven't really discussed is that when you actually do stuff in Revit, um, there are different things that actually you can log and say, okay, well, the cost of this, um, let's see if this light has it. No, there are different properties in here. Some of them depend on the model a little bit, um, where you can specify, oh, this is this model and it costs this much. Um, and actually build it into calculations for the cost of the home. Um, that's not something we're going to do in this. Um, quite, well, not literally, we're not going to do it. Um, but you could use some of the other tools. Uh, we'll be going over um, a couple things next week, or sorry, next class, um, that detail that. So, for your milestone, I want you guys, those of you who haven't already, because I know, again, some of you have, um, tap these, okay. So I want you guys to go through and I want you to actually put in furniture into your model. All right. So if you haven't put in, um, say, a bed um, in a bedroom, put a, put a bed in the bedroom, um, put a couch in the living room, um, see if you can find a toilet, put a toilet in the bathroom. Um, and then if you can find a, uh, find a stove and a fridge, try and put those in the kitchen and then model a countertop to work with it. So do the model in place. Um, again, the process is super simple. So if I go to component, oops, component, model in place, um, I would do generic models. We'll call this kitchen counter. Um, and then I'm going to do an extrusion. And I will do the extrusion from 0 to 3 foot 6. And we're going to set our work plane to level one. So that's where we want it to be. And then I can literally just follow this wall around. Um, and we'll say this countertop goes all the way around like that. Two foot. Um, and then we'll do another one offset two foot. Uh, just to make that trace back easier and then set that back to zero and there we go so that outline right there when I complete this um, <laughs> turns into another brick surface stop it um, so okay finished model 3d view uh, this 3D view. There we go. So then if we kind of just uh, go over here and you can see into the kitchen, 
Um, we have this uh, grab all my walls right here. Uh, hide in view. So then now I have this kitchen countertop that I could go through and at least as a basic starter for a kitchen countertop. Um, we could set this so that it goes to three foot. Oh, that's super tall. What am I thinking? Um, and then set the start to maybe three foot one. And then if we apply that, you end up with just the slab that would be the actual countertop space, right? So then you could model in um, cabinets underneath this um, and just kind of build your kitchen up from there. Just using super simple extrusions. Um, if you wanted to make something like a shaker cabinet, um, you could even pick a plane like this wall right here, or actually you could even use this base right here. My brain went just just went. You can use your own face too now. Uh, okay, so then you could do something like that, where you have say this comes out one inch, or not even not even an inch. Uh, what am I thinking? Doing uh, let's do five eighths. Did I get five eighths? Yeah, five eighths. For um, let me do a two inch offset. Space bar, oops. Come on. I think this mouse is dying. Um, oh, and then it reset the offset for me. Cool. Okay. Nope. Oh my god, stop. Okay, space bar to flip inside. Okay, I'll delete that one. So that's the sort of outside of it. And then let's do another one, create extrusion. Um, and then this one will be half inch. And then we'll just draw inside of this one, inside of my brick cabinet door. Um, so we'll draw that there. And so then that's a real simple, easy way to just create a uh, fairly basic um, cabinet door. Apparently I can only do one thing at a time. Um, hopefully you guys don't do everything you do. Um, well, don't do everything like with this level of detail. All I really want to see is sort of a kitchen counter for this. Um, I'm more interested in you guys getting uh, furniture in the rest of your house for this project. All right. So make sure you've got furniture detailed. This was just me going off on a tangent. Uh, don't worry about the kitchen cabinets. Don't do kitchen cabinets. Please don't do kitchen cabinets. Um, so anyway, uh, get some furniture in there, whether it's using existing Revit assets, you model something, or um, you use outside assets um, to create that. All right. Um, I'll see you guys in class.